day 16 of our daily vlog. <laughs> These vlogs are not in consecutive days because obviously Sundays is my normal video for releasing a, a Ben's Garage video. But yeah, this is my 16th daily vlogging video. Well, I did say yesterday that I was gonna do a bit of an update on The Hobbit. Well, I have some information here. She jotted down a few notes so that I get it right and I'm not telling people wrong information. I'm not gonna go into too much detail. You don't want to know all this, that and the other. Uh, she went in for radiotherapy yesterday. Uh, she was back again, hour and a half. She got there and uh, they said, oh, you're not in today? She said, yes, I am. You know, the rendezvous, the doctor said I'm in, the nurse said I'm in. <clears throat> they looked on the thing, oh, the machine's broken. So there was some kind of cock up somewhere along the line. Then, while she was waiting, coming back out of the hospital, she got a phone call saying, oh yeah, your appointment's on next Tuesday, uh, or the 7th of March, I think that's Tuesday. Anyway, so radiotherapy will now be starting on the 7th of March. That gives us a little bit of a break over our holiday, which, uh, holiday? Oh, I'm getting all my words wrong today. I was talking to The Hobbit earlier and stuff was all just coming out wrong. It will give us a, a bit of a break over our birthday. So well, she's not gonna have to whisk off to hospital for radiotherapy and come back this and So we've got a few days before she goes in for radiotherapy. But I've got some notes here. See if I can decipher her handwriting. So initial diagnosis, when she first got diagnosed, it was stage three invasive ductal carcinoma. Tumor was at 75 millimeters and at least one lymph node was at two centimeters. They classed that as a grade two medium growth rate. So fair enough, she goes off for chemo, has all that, hair falls out, fingernails and toenails have gone really bad, her teeth were going bad. It's all side effects of chemo. If you've, if you've had it or you know somebody who has had chemotherapy, you'll know the side effects can be pretty nasty. Um, the last chemotherapy session was on the 9th of December. So we had a pretty peaceful Christmas. Surgery was on the 3rd of January. That was all went straight forward. She was out on the same day, <laughs> back home. Um, so then after pathological testing, it sounds crazy, doesn't it? Post-surgery, so they've took all the tumor out and they've removed lymph nodes. It now becomes a stage three. The tumor had only shrunk to 65 millimeters and one lymph node still had active cancer and two dormant cells. So they've removed, I can't remember, I think she had nine lymph nodes from under her arm. I think she said there's about 40 around there, anyway. So now it is, uh, it's gone from a grade two to a grade three. Fast growth rate, aggressive type, likely to spread. Now this leads us on to the chemotherapy that she'll be having after radiotherapy. So, um, it just says there's a high risk for reoccurrence and spread. So there'll be more chemo after radio along with hormone blockers because this cancer was, it's hormone, it's HR. She did come out with all these fancy names and numbers. It's something positive, too much hormones. Um, as I say, I'm not gonna to get too involved in all of this, that and the other. But as I was explaining yesterday, after radiotherapy, she's then going on to another round of chemotherapy. I think she said either six or eight sessions. I can't remember. I ought to pay more attention, didn't I? <laughs> but it's a trial. But not. it's not like, it, oh, here's a new drug. We're going to trial this. We're going to see if we can cure you and this, that, and the other. This, this drug that they, she's going to be put on trial for has been used for other cancers, not the specific type of cancer that she's got. And as I was explaining, it will be quite rigorous. There, it, she's, there's, going to be, there's going to be a choice of chemos, but they've not decided which one they're going to put her on yet. There's one which is in pill form. So you have a pill twice a day for two weeks and then you have a week off. And the other one is intravenous. Now she has got the port fitted in here, but the doctor that she saw when for this trial drug says, I don't like the look of that. It's not looking very good under the skin. I want to get that out. She said, are you, do you mind having a pick line in your arm? 
So that will probably be there for the duration of the chemo if they go down that route. If it's going to be pill form, they might just take that out and there you go, take pills for twice a day for two weeks and then a week off and then repeat that cycle for six times or, or eight, I can't remember. But because it's going to be a trial, they're going to be monitoring her, you know, watching her like a hawk, um, which in one respect is quite a good thing because they'll keep an eye on what's going on. This trial that they, I think it's been going on for a few years, but it's got to, the trial has to run for 10 years and they gather all the information from all the patients that are on the trials and, oh, who would want to be a doctor? Bloody hell. <laughs> uh, I've got, I've just started videoing a, a bit of an unboxing. We're going to be fitting a new webcam in this car. Now this is the company that, provided Sam with the dash cam and he's, he had the three, the one pointing forwards, one pointing backwards and the interior one. That film's in 4K. Now, they did get in touch with me before. Well, they got, they got in touch with me first, actually, and said, um, would you like to have one of our cameras for, if you make a video? Thought, yeah, no problem. And then they wanted me to pay for it and I was like, no, nah, you can piss off. It says, uh, I'm paying for something for you to get free after. Anyway, a few emails, backwards and forwards, and I was basically just said, look, I'm not interested, I'm not buying it. So they sent me the the budget version, <laughs> which looks still a good bit of kit. It's, it films in 2K and it's only one camera, but it looks like it's a good bit of kit. So I'll be putting that in the car. I'm just gonna get in the car. I might just film a little bit on the phone so the quality will be slightly different when I get in the car for this little daily vlog. But the main purpose of this daily vlog was to give you all an update on The Hobbit. I know a lot of you have been you know, sending well wishes and asking how she's doing and that. And uh, I do read them out to her and she does really appreciate it. Um, tomorrow's the big birthday celebrations. Um, so there's gonna be plenty of food, chocolate and God knows what going on. Uh, no birthday present. I did get a birthday present, um, but The Hobbit hasn't got hers yet. She'll probably be getting a load of wool because she's taken up knitting. Well, not taking it up. She's always doing this nail binding and then she's doing crochet. Now she's doing knitting with the old needles. So that will be her birthday present further on down the line when she needs some more. So, yeah. I'm going to jump in the car and see what I can do with some stuff in the car that I've had some ideas with. See you in there. And then I'll finish it off in the car. So you tell me, what do you think about having the iPad there in front of that screen? I don't know how I'd fix it on. Maybe a bit of Velcro. Uh, I know they do magnets. Oh, I don't know. I might be able to fix something on the bottom here with a bit of a lip just to hold it on and then just maybe a bit of Velcro along the top of the dashboard here. I really don't know. Conundrums. Now, I've obviously got the iPad in a case. It's one of these poetic rubber cases. Um, whether I would have to take it out of the case and stick something, I think if it was good to be using magnets, I'd have to take the case off and have some, put some magnet sticky things on the back of it. It would be ideal if I could get something to tuck down just between the dash and the head unit, just as a lip. To maybe hold it away from the the buttons on the screen. Uh, no, I just don't know. Don't know. That's the plan. I I want to get my GPS on the iPad. It's a nice big screen. It's easy to work and navigate. Looking at getting the Garmin Glow Two for the GPS receiver for the iPad. Rave reviews on that. 
when it comes to radios, I don't think I'm going to hardwire in that radio that I've got with an aerial. I'm just going to use my handheld one. We've got two Baofangs, the UV5Rs, which are programmed for PMR446. And if I get going out on trails with people with CBs, I'll probably just get a portable CB. Um, I found what there's a, there's one on uh, Amazon with an aerial. It plugs in your car socket and it's portable and you can get a battery pack for it if you wanted to go away from your car. That might be an idea. Rather, I don't really want a lot of stuff all over the screen. I mean, the Hobbit is chuffed to bits that I've taken the Apple CarPlay screen off. Um, and I've I've got this in the air vent for my phone, but I've, the phone's just a little bit too small for me to want to be able to navigate with it. Um, I will try it, obviously. But, oh, I don't know. I just don't know. We're going out tomorrow in the car, so I might plan a route on Osman Maps and use my phone and see how well I get on with it. It'll be on the road, so it won't be a... Um, off-road excursion but we'll try that out um but yeah any thoughts on this ipad idea on the i don't want ram mounts and stuff all sticking on the windscreen i don't really want to be drilling into the dashboard if i can help it because let me flick the camera around and i'll show you uh, i mean that, it does sit there Maybe put a bit of Velcro across there on the back of the iPad, but there's not a lot to stop that falling this way. So it wants something just to tuck down there with a lip, just to hold that. And that would be ideal, I think. That's a lovely big screen for a map. I don't really want it down here, you know, on a, on a ram mount wobbling about. Because they, they do mounts which um, push into the, the cup holder and it's got an arm coming up and you can sort of have your iPad there like that. Which, it might work, but I don't know because it's going to wobble about a bit and I don't want any of that. So the last thing I want is a wobbly iPad. I want something that's fixed and it's not going to keep shaking about. That's my plan anyway. Um, let me know what you think. If you've come up with a solution for having your iPad in your Range Rover. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to waste money on something that's not going to work. Obviously the Garmin Glow I need. So I'll get that. But the mounting idea, it's either, I, I just don't know. So give us some ideas in the comment section below. <laughs> anyway, that's going to be it for this video. A uh, bit of an update on The Hobbit. And we've just been messing about a little bit out here. So we'll catch you maybe tomorrow, maybe not. <laughs> I might get a bit too carried away with our birthday, but I might do because I might, yeah. Anyway, if I do one tomorrow, we'll catch you tomorrow. Bye for now.